Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on configuring a list box with multiple columns on a user form. So I have here on this worksheet some data, uh, fictitious data, from 15 participants. It has a participant number, education is one variable, gender is another, and then age is the final variable. And I want to list all these variables, all this data, on a user form. So I have here a user form that I configured that has all the columns, the four columns I want, and includes all the data. And if you click on any one of the records, it'll highlight it. If you double click, it'll select the participant ID that corresponds with the selection you made and reset the form. So I'm going to show you how I configured this list box using this blank user form that's in blue. So before I move to the code view, I want to show you something in the name manager. To make this user form, to make this list box populate on the user form as we want it to, uh, we need a named range. And in this case I used a dynamic named range and I called it all data. You can see I have it highlighted here in the name manager under the formulas tab at the, on the top ribbon. And you can see it uses an offset formula so that it's always highlighting the range that's populated from A through D uh, with this data. So if you add another record, say 1016, and you populate the data, the range will expand to include that. Similarly, if you delete, say 1015, this range will shrink to just have 1001 through 1014. It's referred to as a dynamic named range, and I have another video that covers how to construct those. So let's move to the code view, which is Alt F11. And you can see here's the user form uh, that I've created, and then here's the user form that I'm going to build so that it completes the same function. So I'll close the other one. So I've already set the background to this as blue and changed the font to Times New Roman 12. And I changed the caption from the default, which is user form 1, which is the name of the object, to main form 2. Also on sheet 1 here to the left, I have a subroutine that shows the user form when you select the orange button on the worksheet. So the way to do that is just to assign macro and select open form 2, which is the code, that'll, the subroutine that will activate the second user form. So that's how that's done. So if I click on this, the blank one shows up. Moving back to the code view. So the first thing I want to do is to add the list box to the user form. So I'm going to select list box. It's in the first row, last item in the first row. And we don't have any other controls or adding to this, so I'm going to make this fairly large. So it takes up pretty much the whole user form. With that control on the user form, I'm going to look at its properties. So this is, these are the properties for list box one. As you can see, there's many things that you can change. You can change the um, back color of a list box if you wanted to. I'm just going to leave it as, uh, the, as white. Uh, you could change the border color, border style. But you, what you're, you're going to need to change for this to work is the column count. So right now it only has one, but you're going to have four. So there's four columns. And then column heads, by default, is false. You want that to be true. I'm going to come back to column widths uh, in a few moments. And then I'm going to leave the, the um, font as times New Roman 12 and the four color as black. Move down next to the row source. And you might remember the dynamic name range named all data. So I'm going to enter that in. When I enter that in, you see that it populates the list box with all four columns. And as you can see, the spacing is equal. So I'll increase the size of this user form and list box. 
but you can adjust the column widths with the column widths property. So I happen to know from doing this before that the ideal column widths are 70, and you want to put a semicolon. So this goes by each column. So 70 is the first column. Uh, 110, 49, and 10. So now you can see it displays the data in a more compressed format, so I can compress the list box and the entire user form down a little bit. So you can adjust those column lists as needed depending on the size of the strings or numbers that are going to be in the different rows. There are, of course, many other properties you can change for this list box. Uh, some that may uh, come in handy. You can change the text align. Of course, right now it's set at left. It allows center and right. This one, of course, I'm going to leave as left. You can also change the list style from the plane that's seen here to what's called option. We have this option button here. To the left. I'm going to leave mine as plain. So now let's take a look at how this looks on the main worksheet. Uh, this is what the original looks like. And here is the new one. And as you can see, I can select items, but if I double click an item, uh, that nothing happens. That's because there's no code behind it. So going back to the code view, I'm going to Double click, and I'm going to change uh, from list box one click to list box one double click. I'm going to delete the empty subroutine for click. So, all the code that we'll need to make this work will go inside this double click for the list box one. So, I'm going to start by declaring uh, a variable as an integer, in this case, r. And I'm going to set r to equal the list box one list index plus one because the list index always starts at zero. And then I'm going to so this this occurs when list box one is double click. So I'm going to select sheets data. and then cells are, I'm going to add another one because we have headings. So I'm going to add another row for that. And then column one, again select. And then just reset the list box value once the subroutine is getting ready to finish up here to nothing equals quotation mark quotation mark so th those five lines of code uh, that's all you'll need for this to work properly so moving back to the main uh, worksheet I've been using which is data you can see now when the main form comes up say I select um, participant 1005 so I select nothing happens I double click you can see now it's selected that 1005 cell A6 on the worksheet. And of course, you could do that with any of the records on here. And each time I double click on one, it selects it, deselects it on the list box, although there's still this little outline that appears so you can see the last selection that was made. I hope you found this video on configuring a list box with multiple columns on a user form to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.